Let's talk about some of the differences between internet computer versus Ethereum. Ethereum is the first cryptocurrency to develop and deploy smart contracts and then was actually adopted and used. Ethereum is currently, as of May 19th, 2024, the second largest cryptocurrency by market cap at around $375 billion, as reported by CoinMarketCap.com. Com. Vitalik Buterin wrote and published the white paper for Ethereum in 2013, who was then followed by Gavin Wood, who published the yellow paper for the Ethereum virtual machine in 2014. Charles Hoskinson also later joined the Ethereum development team and then later left to found and develop the Cardano project. Joseph Lubin was also part of the Ethereum team and has also founded Consensus. Some other persons involved include Anthony D. Lorio, Jeffrey Wilk, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, might be Mahai Elisi, and Amir Chetri. Ethereum is an expensive place to store data. Just one megabyte is going to cost you almost 19 ETH, which of course then means that one gigabyte is going to cost you nearly 19,000 ETH. This information from another source pretty much matches what was just described as the Ethereum cost for data storage. And with the same information, somebody estimated about seven years ago that it would cost you about $5.5 million to store one gigabyte of data on the Ethereum blockchain. When it comes to speed, Ethereum is not one of the faster blockchains. According to CoinSpect, the real-time TPS of Ethereum is just over 11 transactions per second. The max recorded TPS is just over 62. Max theoretical is at about 119. And the TTF, which is the time to finality, is about 16 minutes. And that means the amount of time that it takes for a transaction to become immutable on the blockchain. We see here similar statistics as provided by the Internet Computer Wiki, where they they say that the average TPS for Ethereum is about 12. Average finality, which is time to finality, is about 15 minutes. And here they actually list that the average TPS for ICP is about 3,200. The max theoretical is unlimited for internet computer. I've also seen internet computer TPS listed at 11,500. And I've also seen references that the real TPS for internet computer is more around six or 7,000. In any case, it is certainly quite a bit more than the 11 or 12 that Ethereum is boasting. As of 2024, there are over 500,000 Ethereum ERC C20 tokens, of which about 607 are currently listed over at coinmarketcap.com. Coinmarketcap.com being one of two very popular websites for looking up cryptos, the other being, of course, coingecko.com. There are currently over 4,000 dApps or decentralized applications built on Ethereum as of 2024. Although Ethereum, of course, has a very large market cap and there are a lot of projects and a lot of dApps that are built on Ethereum, that's kind of a given because Ethereum is the second largest market cap in all of cryptocurrency. It has essentially first mover advantages as far as smart contracts, and it's been around longer than almost everything else other than Bitcoin. So that is, is really kind of a given. However, Ethereum is also very, very slow, operating at 10, 12 transactions per second which is not acceptable for mass adoption. Something like a 15 or 16 minute time to finality, which again, that's pretty slow. Excessively expensive on-chain storage, which is why so many cryptos, especially, of course, cryptos built on Ethereum, they don't use everything in Web3 
and they will typically will either have to rely on something like IPFS, which is decentralized, but it's not cryptocurrency, it's not blockchain. They'll either use that or they'll use just basic centralized solutions for data storage and compute power, because these are things that the Ethereum blockchain just can't really provide. The other thing is Ethereum being so old and so big, and it therefore has a very large network, you know, with an excess of something like 800,000 validators, it is pretty secure because of the size of the network. And that is one of the challenges in overcoming Ethereum for pretty much any project out there. Even Solana only has around 2,000 validators, Solana being kind of a favorite of a lot of people in the market today. If nothing else, there's certainly a lot of hype behind Solana. Let's talk a little bit about Internet Computer. Internet Computer is a cryptocurrency blockchain technology. Internet Computer is a project that was created by the Definity Foundation, and the Definity Foundation was founded by Dominic Williams. And here we see Dominic Williams listed as one of the Definity team members. And when it comes to the Definity team, it's also worth mentioning that they have 270 plus team members. Those team members have over 1,600 publications, 100,000 citations, and more than 250 patents between them. And to more finely hone the point, if we were to filter just by their R&D team, which is research and development, we then see all 82 team members listed who are a member of the research and development team. Internet Computer offers on-chain storage at a cost of $5 per gigabyte per year, which is shown on their home homepage up in the upper right hand corner here. And really kind of the vision of internet computer is that they want to replace most of the world's current software with software being ran from a smart contract, which is actually something that internet computer refers to as a canister. The internet computer blockchain offers compute power as well as storage. And recently an LLM AI was demonstrated as running 100% on chain with internet computer. With internet computer, you can actually call upon resources in web two, as well as resources in other web three projects. Internet computer is controlled by a DAO, which is a decentralized autonomous organization. Internet computer is in theory, infinitely scalable by simply building more and more subnets, which is not the same thing as sharding. The hardware that is required to set up a internet computer node cost in excess of $10,000. We're talking about enterprise grade servers. And this is also why internet computer is able to provide compute power. Internet computer also offers a reverse gas fee model wherein developers pay the gas fee and thereby making it a lot easier for mass adoption by retail investors and retail users in particular. Internet computer smart contracts or canisters are able to serve web assets directly to web 2. Just to give you an idea of the hardware being used for an internet computer node, we have the generation 2.3 specifications here, looking at about half a terabyte of RAM, over 30 terabytes of storage space. And you can see here, dual socket AMD Epic Milan CPU is recommended. This is where the compute power is coming from on the nodes is because these are very beefy machines. And those nodes might be getting even more powerful in the not too distant future as there are discussions about possibly including GPUs in an upcoming iteration of the node specifications. Internet computer utilizes chain key cryptography, which encompasses a number of things, which we are not going to cover in in their entirety at this time. However, one of the noteworthy takeaways here is that each subnet on internet computer, in order to approve of a transaction or an action through chain key to cryptography, each subnet only needs to reach a threshold of two thirds of the nodes before something is approved and processed. Another feature of internet computer is CKBT 
BTC, which is chain key Bitcoin. CKBTC is not bridged and it is not wrapped. CKBTC is a direct link between the Bitcoin network and the internet computer, thus reducing the risks tied to bridges. CKBTC also offers the first bona fide use case for bringing smart contracts to BTC. And we can see some of the concerns or problems that this seeks to address, such as the lack of programmability on the Bitcoin blockchain, which not everyone would agree is actually a problem, as well as other points like limited integration with DeFi, addressing high latency and fees on the Bitcoin network, and security concerns concerns with bridges. Similar to CKBTC, Internet Computer also offers CKETH or Chainkey ETH. Some of the advantages to developers to use CKETH would include things like lower transaction fees, the ability to manage an Ethereum wallet directly in an ICP canister, seamless conversion, multi-chain environment support, gasless token swaps, and Web2 integration. Because ICP canister smart contracts can call into Ethereum smart contracts, it enables a true world computer in a multi-chain environment. Smart contracts can seamlessly communicate across blockchains. ICP already integrates with the Bitcoin network and native ETH integration is underway. As far as internet computer tokenomics at Genesis, which was in May of 2021, the total supply was 469 million. The circulating supply was 123 million. As of March 14th, 2024, the total supply is 515 million, and the circulating supply is now up to 460 million, which is about 89% of the total supply, of which there is 243.8 million staked, which is about 47.2% of the total supply. As we can see here at Crypto Rank, there are some unlocks coming ahead, but they're not particularly massive unlocks. We're looking at less than 1% of the total supply being released each month, which hovers pretty close to about half of a percent being released each month. Internet Computer includes both deflationary and inflationary mechanisms. Governance participants can convert voting rewards to newly minted ICP. Also, node providers receive rewards in the form of newly minted ICP tokens. On the other hand, ICP is converted to cycles in other words, burned, in order to pay for computation and storage, which is depicted in the picture shown on screen. The deflationary mechanism, or burn, is through burning cycles. In order to get cycles, you have to convert ICP into cycles, and then cycles are burned for storage, messaging, and execution. As previously mentioned, Internet Computer does offer a reverse gas model, which is very important for user experience. You don't want people that have no idea what crypto is to have to set up crypto wallets and buy crypto in order to pay gas fees, in order to use crypto-based applications or make crypto transactions. That's not the way to encourage mass adoption. Computation and storage would be paid for by ICP smart contracts, in other words, the developers. And there is the option to add a user-based gas fee. Unlike with blockchains like Ethereum, it's not just built into the structure of the blockchain to force users to pay gas fees. Also, the gas fees on internet computer are a lot cheaper than gas fees on Ethereum. As far as speed, in particular TPS or transactions per second, it really depends on where you get your information. In some cases, Definity themselves, which is where this is from, will actually tell you that internet computer has an 11,000 500 TPS. I've seen other sources where they say that that 11,500 is an accurate theoretical limit, but in actual practice today, it's more like six or 7,000 TPS, which make no mistake, that's still faster than most, if not all other blockchains. Here, we see that internet computer is listed as a limitless TPS, and that is based on the concept that you can continue to scale internet computer by building out more and more sub nets and bringing more and more nodes online. Definity also points out that smart contracts or canisters on internet computer can serve web or HTTP requests, whereas 
Most other blockchains cannot do that. You can use internet computer without requiring internet computer tokens, which are the ICP tokens. Internet computer offers infinite scaling. And as far as the number or percentage of blockchain nodes in the cloud, internet computer says that they have 0% in the cloud, whereas Ethereum, for instance, many of theirs are hosted by Web 2.0, such as AWS, which is Amazon. As far as the cost of storing data on chain, I have seen all kinds of figures and really they're all extremely high. So it doesn't really matter if it costs you $10,000 per gigabyte or a million dollars or $5 million. Any of those price points are just ridiculous. And in the case of Ethereum, I, I've seen anything from something like 50,000 to three, 400,000 to two, three million, five million. Here they're saying 350 million. And then even Solana is substantially more to host data on chain. Although to be fair, neither Ethereum nor Solana were designed to host data on chain, which is kind of interesting if you're trying to build a Web3. And here's just a few other data points that just gives you a basis of comparison. So when it comes to validators, Ethereum, very decentralized and has over 500,000 validators, according to this source. The BNB chain is very centralized with only around 40 validators. Solana being moderately decentralized and has over 2,000 validators. Avalanche, moderately decentralized, 1,200 validators. Internet computer listed as moderately decentralized, unlimited nodes capabilities has over 1200 validators. The point is this just gives you some idea for comparison's sake. And then as far as data storage, you know, Ethereum costing an estimated $79 million annually. However, it doesn't say what it's storing or how much data that is. So I'm not sure, sure if they mean the Ethereum ledger or if they mean storing a gigabyte of data on Ethereum for a year as a developer or what they're referring to. It says here, BNB chain, price unknown. Solana, about $110,000 per gigabyte, estimated annually via third party. Avalanche, unknown. Internet computer, $5 per gigabyte per year, completely on chain. Then as far as scalability, Ethereum, improving scalability. This is also why there are so many Ethereum L2s, by the way, because Ethereum's really just a settlement layer and it's not actually that scalable. BNB chain, moderate scalability. Solana, unreliable network and scalability. Avalanche, varied scalability. Internet computer, unlimited scalability. The point is when you can actually find information that even bothers to include internet computer, the internet computer metrics tend to be favorable, if not superior. Essentially, the way I look at it is internet computer is an opportunity for getting in fairly early on something that could be something really big, like Ethereum, to a lesser extent, like Solana is currently. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that internet computer can do a lot of things that Ethereum can't. In fact, it can do a lot of things that most other blockchains can't. You, know, you can store data on chain for $5 per gig per year, which is expensive compared to some storage solutions, but not when compared to blockchain storage solutions. Internet computer offers compute power, and it's powerful enough to run an LLM AI on chain chain. This also means that all of those thousands of dApps could potentially be hosted 100% on chain. NFTs can actually exist on chain. Existing Ethereum projects can actually be ported to internet computer without having to be completely rewritten because internet computer has chain key ETH and they're coming out with support for ERC-20. Internet computer should offer some good gains in the 2024 2025 bull run. But make no mistake, there will be better gains elsewhere. Internet computer is a bit more of a long-term play. It's more of a serious contender, something that you can reasonably expect to still be around five or 10 years from now, if not even further into the future. Now, I know we didn't touch upon everything that we could have talked about here today in this video, but what are your thoughts? What do you think of internet computer and where it's going to lead tomorrow?